Hi friends, as usual we are painting some flowers, but today we are painting spring flowers because who doesn't love spring and flowers? <laughs> Welcome back, my name is Shada Campbell and today we are painting crocuses, daffodils, snowdrops, and more. And our video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Let me share my supplies with you really quick. I am using a uh, Canson watercolor sketch pad. So it's 140 pound watercolor paper. It is not the best quality, but it's good, especially for the price point. It's great for practicing. This is what it looks like. I will link that in the video description. Um, I also have a couple of small pointed round brushes. I think I have like a number one, two, and three here. These are sable hair. Um, synthetic works well. Uh, too, but they just don't last quite as long. So I've linked this set and a synthetic set in the video description. Check that out if you're looking for brushes. And then I have my Munio watercolor 48 pan set. I've been using this a lot lately. I really like the way the color lifts up out of the pans. Um, and yeah, here it is in action. <laughs> so I'm starting today by mixing up a, uh, a bright green. I, I want it to be bright because it is spring and spring is all about those young, fresh greens, but I don't want it to be too like Crayola, too childish. So I'm mixing in a little brown or mix in a little red. Uh, that is the opposite color of green, so it can mute it a little bit. And you might wanna mix up a darker green as well. Now, if you're looking for more info on mixing, check out my watercolor e-course. I will link that in the description as well. Uh, and then I'm going to start with tulips today. And for the tulips, you could do any color, of course, but I'm going to do a kind of peachy pink. So I mixed up a little peach with a bit of pink or red in it. A little orange is nice too. Lots and lots of water in there. Maybe a little bit of white, keeping it light and fresh for spring. Now we'll come over here to the page and just on the tip of that number one round brush, I have that light pea green, spring green, and I am just painting some very perfectly imperfect lines. And the lines are of course the stems for the tulips. And we'll add a little more pressure to the belly of that brush, run it along the page to make some leaves, long leaves that are a little thin at the top. Don't worry too much about the shape, just have fun with it, practice. And then for the flower, I run that brush across the page once, come back in with some water and kind of bleed out that area to make the shape of a tulip. Maybe add a little more pigment there. Let's do it again, one or two brush strokes. And then with water, you bleed out the other side and kind of form the shape of the tulip, which is kind of like this, um, I guess it's like a rounded triangle. It's opening up and out. And we might add just a hint of darker color on that left-hand side. And then once the flowers are in place, you may add an extra leaf or two. And then with a bit of dark brown on just the very tip of that small brush, you can do these tiny little lines to make it look like the tulip is blooming. Our next flower is a crocus and I have a light purple on my brush and I am dragging the belly of the brush across the page using about two brush strokes per petal. Two or three brush strokes, one, two, there's a petal, one, two, another petal. You're going to do six petals fanning out in a circle. Let's get really close so you can see. Go back for extra paint when you need it. And for this one, I made the front three petals very short. Now, while the paint is still wet, you can add a little bit of darker purple at the top of each petal. If it's dry, you can just kind of blend it in yourself. That's totally fine. It will give us a nice light center of the flower where we can place the bright orange stamen. This is, of course, the crocus, so it has that nice bright orange or yellow center. Just do some wonky, very perfectly imperfect lines for those stems. And then again, we can add some leaves if you like. And I just drag the belly of the brush across the page to form the shape of a leaf. Now we'll come over here and I'm going to mix up a little yellow ochre with maybe a bit of brown or even a little bit of dark orange to get a nice um, natural color and I'll just do a bit of stippling just letting the 
paint flow off the very tip of my brush to make the stamen. Next up is the daffodil. Now I'm starting with a bright yellow, like a cadmium yellow or a lemon yellow, and I'm mixing in a little yellow ochre and then a bit of white because I want a color that's, again, not too bright. Like I don't want these bright preschool colors. I want them to be a little more sophisticated, but still look true to the flower. So add a little bit of brown or a darker yellow. Add a little bit of white because we're going to go very, very light for this daffodil. Um, and let's move over to the page. You can see what I'm doing. This is very similar to the crocus where you're using the belly of the brush to make the shape of six petals. Just drag that brush across the page. Don't overthink it. Um, and just keep going around in a circle until if you do five petals, that's fine. And that's all there is to it. We'll use a light green and make a little stem. Again, just some simple little leaves. Drag that brush across the page. You're like, okay, we get it. <laughs> um, and uh, you can always do leaves that kind of end where the petals are and just don't let them touch quite uh, to the yellow or to whatever color. Just leave a little bit of negative space between leaf and petal. And then as that dries, we're going to mix up a nice orange for that center, that big funny stamen that the daffodil has. Again, I'm mixing a little brown into this amber color to mute it slightly. I don't want anything too bright. And then I'm going to make a circle of tiny lines, just like that. If it helps to paint the circle really lightly first and then do the lines over top, you can. And then with water, you kind of bleed it all together. Clear water, if it gets crazy, use a dry brush to sop up some of the extra paint. And then as it dries, do that circle of little lines again. Do it a second time. If you made it this far into the video, I got good news for you. We've got a giveaway. Someone is gonna win these Derwent Inktense watercolors and extra water brushes from Koi. All you have to do is comment below and let me know your favorite spring flower. Okay, the next one is really fun, if a little hard to see. We're going to paint snowdrops. So I have the lightest gray on the tip of my brush, and you can see I just do a brush stroke, and then I do a thin line beside it to form the shape of the petal. Again, a brush stroke, and then a thin line, brush stroke, and then a thin line, and that one I did a thin line, and then a brush stroke because I'm crazy. Um, and then we'll do three so you can really see what I'm doing. Just the lightest gray, you're kind of painting the shadow on the petal. Um, and then as I add this nice bright green, you can see how the snowdrop comes together. These are the prettiest little flowers. I'm doing like a rounded triangle on the top of each one. Each one has those three petals. And then this, this looks like something out of like a fairy garden. These are so cute and they're fun to paint. Um, and so yeah, just adding these rounded triangles to the top. And then you take the tip of your brush and you do these funny stems. You wanna go up and then back down so that you can see that each snowdrop is drooping. That's so cute. And, and keeping them all close together in a cluster like I've done, I think really helps as well because you get a bit of the green stem and leaves in behind the white flowers and that can help to make the white really pop. And some of them you might not see the curve of the stem. Um, so you can do just a straight stem as if the plant was facing the viewer. Again, drag that belly of the brush across the page to make some simple leaf shapes. These ones I've done quite rounded. And then we're going to come back and pick up a bit of darker gray. You can see just how delicate this is. I'm just picking up a tiny bit of gray paint on the tip of my brush. It's not very dark. And then we'll come back to the flower and just add these thin lines near the top where the sepal is. Maybe add a very light outline around one or two of the petals. But just adding some little shading lines can really make those white flowers pop off the white page. It's a little tricky, but if you have a small brush, this is definitely doable. Have fun with it, and don't worry if you don't get it perfect the first time. To finish the snowdrops, I'll grab just a little bit of darker green and maybe add a tiny bit of detail to some of those stems and leaves, but that is totally optional. 
Okay, next flower up is, I forget what it's called, but it's that really light little blue one that you see in the spring sometimes. <laughs> so I am mixing up this sort of teal blue. I'll add a little darker blue, maybe a little purple. You could really go either way with this. You could make a periwinkle or you could make a very teal or aqua green. And this one is fun because it's tiny and it's just these little petals. Some are on an angle, so we're just going to do a fan shape of three or four petals all going out in the same direction. That's exactly what I'm doing here. You know this flower, they're all kind of joined by the same little stem. And then I'll do some that are open. So for that one, we'll do maybe four petals and then some shallow short petals in the front, in front of them to make it look like the flower is opening up. So we have some on an angle, some opening. I'm going to do another one that's sort of inside profile here. <laughs> and then once you've done a few groupings of them, come in with a nice grass green or any color of green, and you're just going to join them all. Gosh, what is this flower called? Bonus points if you know, this one has a funny name and that's why I can't remember it. But um, joining these up here and my stems got like a little weird <laughs> because of where I placed the flowers, but that's okay. And then I decided maybe I need a few more flowers, pick up a little blue and we'll add some extra blossoms in on the left hand side here. Join that up and that looks a little more balanced, maybe a couple leaves and this is coming together. You can change up the shading for some of the leaves, do some light ones, do some dark ones, and that's that. Okay, and then I think I've saved the best one for last because the last flower we're going to paint is the hyacinth, or I think it's called the grape hyacinth, the really little mini one. So I am starting by simply painting some stems. That's how most of these begin, just very perfectly in perfect lines. Use the tip of your brush, some can be curved. And then we're going to mix up a dark, cool purple. So you wanna mix a little blue into that purple, a little dark blue, maybe a little light blue. Just come up with something that's very dark but like kind of on its way to periwinkle I'm going to mix in some of that tealish blue and uh, you'll also want to add a little bit of water to some of this so that you have a light area of paint to pull from and a dark area of paint to pull from so mixing up your paints ahead of time will lead you to um, I think just a more successful and fun painting experience. So watch as I add a little extra water. Now I've got some dark paint and some light paint. And with the darker purple, I am doing a bit of stippling, just allowing the paint to flow off the end of that round brush. Of course, the belly of the brush holds lots of moisture. And then once I've done some dark stippling, I'm adding water or picking up some of that lighter paint and I'm doing more stippling, doing this these very circular, spotted areas but I'm allowing the flower to get a little lighter as we work our way towards that stem just doing these circular shapes all grouped together all really messy let's do another one together this one's going to be kind of horizontal because the uh, stem is curving and these flowers are very top heavy so they tend to fall over and you can see I'm doing all these circle shapes and they're all just blending together. You can add darker paint into the wet area for a very natural look, or you can add darker paint onto the light area and kind of blend it out yourself. Both uh, are equally good and you can do a little bit of both as I'm doing here, just having fun with this. I think I, um, these are my favorite ones to paint because you're almost abstracting the flower a little bit, but in the end, what you end up up with still really looks like the flower. Um, this grape hyacinth is just so funny and it really looks like spring to me. These flowers are basically finished, but if you want, you can take a little darker milky yellow on the tip of your brush and add a bit of detail to the the unknown flower or to the daffodil and that is it thank you guys so much for watching today i love painting watercolor flowers with you please hit that subscribe button and thank you again to squarespace for sponsoring this video 
I'm excited to tell you about Squarespace because when you create your own website, you can turn your passion for art from a hobby into a business in literally one afternoon. They have all these great templates. You can preview them, you can shop them, and then you can choose the one that speaks to you and quickly input some photos. It's super simple. This one I am really happy with. I made myself a little shade of shop. It took me about half an hour. No big deal. Everything was super easy with your shop all set up. Squarespace makes it easy to set up payment processing. You can accept payments from credit cards or PayPal, and there's 24 seven customer support. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Shada Campbell to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.